In the previous videos, you have studied parts of the plant like root, stem and leaves. Today, I will tell you about flowers and fruits. Sow some seeds of pea, bean, tomato in a pot or in your garden. Allow them to germinate and grow into new plants. Water the plants regularly. Record your observations about growth of these plants. When do these plants bear flowers and fruits? When a seed germinates and produces a young plant, in the beginning only roots and stem grow. Roots grow deep in soil and spread. Stem produces branches and leaves. And then after some time, we see flowers produced on plant. Flowers are produced for reproduction by plants. Flowers later on produce fruit and seeds. When seeds are sown, we get new plants. Collect a variety of flowers you see around like jasmine, marigold, hibiscus, nerium, kana, rose, bougainville, etc. Observe their colors. Do they have fragrance? You will see that these flowers have a variety of colors. Some of them have fragrance and some are without fragrance. Now let us study the flower of hibiscus. I have chosen the plant particularly because flowers are large in size and they have all the parts present. We say hibiscus flower to be complete as it has all four parts present. Hibiscus flower has a stalk called pedicel. Some flowers like tuberose do not have a stalk. Pedicel at one end is attached to stem and its other end is expanded and swollen. This is called receptacle. Parts of the flower are arranged on the receptacle. Flower of hibiscus shows calyx, corolla, androsium and gynosium. Calyx. It is the outermost part of flower. Have you observed a flower bud? In a bud, we see green leaf-like parts covering petals. This is the calyx. A calyx has green colored sepals. It protects flower in bud condition. Inside the calyx are petals. This part is called the corolla. Usually petals are large and colorful. Many a time, we see insects visiting flowers to collect nectar. Colorful petals attract insects towards flowers. On the inner side of petals, the part present in androsium. This is the male reproductive part of flower. It is made up of stamens. Each stamen has bag-like anthers and a stalk called filament. The innermost part of flower is called gynosium. This is the female reproductive part of flower. It has carpels. Each carpel has stigma at the tip, a stalk called style and swollen ovary at the base. Androsium and gynosium produce special cells for reproduction. Students, as you have observed flower dissection in the video, you can also try it at home to study parts of flower. Now there may be a question in your mind. How do flowers produce seeds and fruits? Let me try to make it simple for you. Androsium produces pollen grains in anthers when it matures. Gynosium at maturity produces egg cells in the ovules. Ovules are present inside ovary. Then pollen grains from anthers fall on stigma of gynosium. Finally, fertilization takes place. It means special cells are produced by pollen grains and ovules. They unite to form fruits and seeds. Flowers like hibiscus, petunia, lotus are large and produced singly. But if flowers are small in size, then are produced in bunch. Examples, jasmine, tulsi, bottle brush, gold mohar, sizzlepenia, etc. Earlier, we have seen that fruits develop from flowers. Can you tell which are the common fruits we eat? Mango, apple, chiku, guava, grapes, etc. We also include tomato, brinjal, ladies finger, coconut, peas in our food. Though we eat them as vegetables, actually for a plant, they are their fruits. Now tell me, when we eat mango, apple, tomato, where are the seeds present? Seeds are inside the fruits. So, in case of fruits we eat, usually seeds are enclosed in fruits. All these fruits have different colors, smell, taste. Even the edible parts differ. For example, we eat tomato along with skin and seeds, whereas we remove skin of mango to eat only pulp and throw away its skin and seeds. Soak some pea, groundnut, maize and jowar seeds in water overnight. Next day, try to remove their skin. You can remove skin of pea and groundnut easily, but cannot remove skin of maize and jowar. After removal of seed cover from pea and groundnut seeds, 
press them with your fingers. Do you see that there are two parts formed in the seed? These parts are called cotyledons. When there are two cotyledons in seeds, these are dicotyledonous seeds. Now try to press soaked maize seeds. You will not get two parts. It is only one. These seeds have only one cotyledon and are called monocotyledonous. These seeds on germination produce radical and plumule. Thus, cotyledon, plumule and radical are parts of seeds. Seeds germinate and produce new plants. Today, you have studied flower, fruits and seeds through this video. Summary Flowers are produced by reproduction. Parts of flower are pedicel, calyx, corolla, androecium and gynoecium. Fruits and seeds develop from flowers. In the end, I am going to assign a small activity to you. Sow some seeds of suitable plants. Observe their germination process carefully. Allow those plants to grow and bear flowers. Now study roots, stem, leaves and flowers of these plants. Challenge Can you think of the role of butterflies, honeybee, etc. in pollination and formation of seeds? Thank you.